Hi guys, this is Aaron Etheridge. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am lead developer for Worlds of Magic. This is the first of our dev videos where we show you a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes with the development process of Worlds of Magic. There have been a good many questions about our world map generation system. So we made the decision to focus this first development video on the current terrain generation system and its roots where it basically evolved from. What you're looking at right now is a 2D texture uh, created dynamically with a diamond square noise generator. This creates terrains, uh, first of all, very quickly. And this was also uh, at least very similar to the method used in Worlds of Magic, obviously the exact, uh, I mean Master of Magic, obviously the exact implementation is a little bit different, but it's very much the same thing. It has a, a number of advantages. As I've already mentioned, it's very fast. Uh, there are a number of different settings where you can control the size of the land mass. Uh, if the land mass is ratio to water, you can basically create one giant continent, uh, a number of continents, or a number of very separated islands. The user will be able to set a few switches, and when they create a world, they can create sort of continent wide maps or uh, little islands that they have to battle across. You'll notice that uh, this texture wraps both north and south as well as east and west. In Worlds of Magic it will only wrap east to west and the north-south will be tundra that does not wrap. Uh, either way this was the noise generation system that we used for the base of our terrain generation system. This was our first test and I'm going to switch here and show you uh, our next step. All right, what we're now looking at is the first of our two-dimensional tests, which we eventually decided to go in another direction, but uh, we'll show you that in a minute. This is a 2D top-down map, uh, complete with mini-map. I think you'll be able to see you know, swamps and deserts, plains, forests, hills, mountains. If you look around, you'll be able to see all those things. There are e even some towns uh, drawn by me. A lot of this, uh, even these dev tiles, were done by our art team. Uh, some of the things I just did myself, I was doing some experimentation. Uh, the little gray dot is a city as envisioned by Aaron Etheridge, and the little brown and black thing is a dungeon as envisioned by Aaron Etheridge. Uh, that's not really the point I want you to take away from this, obviously. First of all, we can move around the map with the mini-map. Whether or not this is beautiful, I think all of you will agree, agree that it's, it's rather momish in its look. It's a top-down view of a bunch of square tiles. Um, over on the right hand side you will see uh, that in the bottom right hand corner rather you will see current plane 0 desired planes 1. If we just hit generate here instantly almost we're given another terrain that we can look over. All right, This terrain consists of uh, just over 32,000 squares. It's 128 by 256. Uh, a lot of that is obviously water and it is only a playable tile in as much as you can move over it. But I think we would all agree that a map without water just wouldn't be much of a map for a game like Worlds of Magic. Uh, again, that's how long it takes to generate. All right, let's, uh, let's do something a little different. We're going to turn this up to 10 planes of existence. I'm going to click Generate here, and you'll be able to see this is over 300,000 playable world tiles. And it's done. Uh, those hills are obviously very debug hills and mountains, guys. I just grabbed some graphics and stuck them in. These were for the dev team testing, and we could tell that those were hills and mountains. That was all that mattered, just like we could tell that that was desert. All right. Keep in mind, we're showing you development footage. If we, if we get negative feedback about the fact that it doesn't look good, uh, probably not going to bother doing a lot more of these, guys. We, we put a lot of work into this. This is for the dev team. We're showing you things for the dev team. Please keep that in mind. Either way, right now we're looking at our current plane zero. And I'm about to switch planes. For those of you that love Dwarf Fortress, I am using the left and right arrows because uh, as a frequent Dwarf Fortress player, they're very familiar with me. This is plane 9. Uh, as you can see, the map immediately changed. You know what? Let, let's go back. Okay. Get in your mind's eye a good image. Look at that mini-map, okay? That's plane 0. So keep watching the mini-map. 9, 8, so on and so forth. And plane 0. All right, to generate 300,000 more terrain tiles, click Generate, and there we have it again, a brand new Plane 0, Plane 9, so on and so forth. I think you get the idea, and I, I think this shows you that as far as a 2D tile system is concerned, whether or not it's beautiful, it works. 
Uh, the problem is the debate rose in the development team whether or not uh, top-down was the view we should go with. A lot of more modern games use different views, different camera angles. And this is actually a two-dimensional system. It does not have a third dimension, so we can't just switch to isometric view. If we wanted to offer top-down and isometric view, we have to do two different sets of tiles. We made the decision to use three-dimensional tiles, and I'm going to show you some of the development step uh, involved in, in creating that. So again, we're, we're about to switch what we're looking at. I, I think you've got the idea of the, the 2D system with minimap and, and able to create multiple planes. So we're just going to switch this up real quick. All right, guys, what you're looking at right now is a blue screen, very clearly. Now, this is the first of our three-dimensional uh, tile map tests, and I wanted to do a bit of explaining um, before I actually turned it on. This actually goes back to that previous section of the video where I showed you a map uh, of over 300,000 tiles. Now, clearly, with a three-dimensional tile system, we could not build 300,000 three-dimensional tiles in memory. So what we needed to do was build a much smaller map and then allow the system to update whatever the three-dimensional tiles were according to the map data that the user was looking at at a particular time. So you click the mini-map, the map data changes, and the three-dimensional tiles update according to what it is you're looking at. There are two parts to this update. The first is to update the mesh, the second the texture. So we had to test the speed of both. The big question was, uh, you know, can Unity update the meshes of enough tiles for a good-sized 3D tile map fast enough where when the user clicks it's an instant map update. This was the result. Now you're not going to be able to see this really. This looks like little spheres becoming little cubes. Uh, it's kind of like that except it's running about 10 times as fast. The video capture software simply cannot catch it. Uh, what I'm seeing looks like I'm looking through the blades of a fan. It's switching so quickly. The question behind this test was can Unity update the number of meshes we need updated in an almost instant manner, and the answer was a resounding yes. What we're going to do is switch over and look at the texture updates and a little changes in the tiles. I'll explain when we get over there. All right, what we're looking at now is the changing texture test. We've made a number of basically trapezoid tiles. Um, it's sort of a you know a blended edge. We didn't want straight edges. And, and there again, keep in mind, guys, this is this is dev team stuff. All right, the light green is playing, the dark greens are forests, browns hills, grays mountains. That's not really the point. Okay, guys, and this is completely random. We didn't even stick the noise generator in it. The idea was how fast can the textures update? Well, instantly. This was the second piece of the puzzle that we needed. Okay, well actually third, fourth, fifth, whatever it was. Uh, the point being that. We can update the mesh, we can update the texture, having generated uh, noise maps with layered uh, layered noise maps, I should have mentioned earlier, with several diamond square noise maps, making a single noise map to generate realistic terrain. Uh, we can render that terrain through what is essentially a window where the, where the user is looking at a section of map. And when they want to change it, it changes instantly. It changes the mesh, it changes the texture. You know, in one minute, you know, one moment, you're looking at, at plains and, and the ocean. You click and you're looking at hills and mountains, and, it, and it's instant. And so we can create maps of hundreds of thousands, even potentially millions of playable tiles. And the map system uh, can keep up with all that. You, you click, you switch planes, it doesn't matter. It, it's all instant, and you don't have any lag or delay, and it's going to be a very fine thing. Uh, this is straying very close um, to, you know, I mean, the real next step is to apply the correct meshes and the correct textures, and all of a sudden, boom, you've got a world map, okay? We're not going to show you that day. That, that is on the way. This is a development video. We wanted to show you the steps we go through uh, when we're doing development. These were the individual pieces that were built, and, uh, and, you know, hopefully very shortly, you will be able to see the result. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, please say something about it. Um, we're excited about the idea of doing development videos, showing you guys some behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, if we get a, you know, a positive response, we'll do more. If not, well, you know, these things take time, and, and we're not going to spend time on, on things that people really aren't interested in. But, uh, but either way, that's it for this first video, and I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. And uh, believe it or not, I really enjoyed making it. So we'll talk to you guys again soon, I guess.